Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Chess of Blades. In the last episode, we left off on Rivian for some reason giving this giving this random chick we met a really sick burn for no apparent reason. We, we just don't know. We have no clue, but <laughs> let's continue. Cute girl. Uh, you two friends? We literally just met about two minutes ago, Arden. I was actually looking for you, though. I trail off figuring it's probably not the best idea to add as a meat shield against any assassins. Unsurprisingly, Arden's eyes light up. If I didn't bear a grudge against him, I'd find it rather cute. Look, we're blocking traffic. Come on. I push his shoulder forward with one hand, steering him along as we stroll past the stalls. Your face looks a little strange, Riv. Is something bothering you? Did you buy spoiled food off one of the merchants by accident? I hesitate, casting an uncertain glance over at Arden's curious expression. Bronda's words from last night are still lurking in the back of my mind, and sharing them with someone would certainly make me feel a little bit more at ease. However, it's been four years since I last saw Arden. For all I know, he could have gotten even worse at keeping his mouth shut than he already has. No, no, don't worry about it. There was something I did want to ask you, though. What did you do to upset the Grand Inquisitor? I don't think I've ever met a more unpleasant man in my life. At that, Arden's eyes widen, his expression suddenly growing sheepish. Oh, him? He's even worse than you are, Riv. I thought he was going to chop my head off just for leaving my room at night. What? You mean guests aren't allowed to leave their rooms? No, they are. It's just... Well, I was just nosying around places I wasn't supposed to, probably. Well, if that's not an Arden-esque thing to do, I don't know what is. He looks a little uncomfortable, though. I wonder what kind of place Linnaeus has found him in. No, it's Linnaeus, isn't it? <laughs> Wait. Linnaeus! Linnaeus has found him in. You don't act anything like how a royal guard ought to, you know. Just because you're off duty for a week doesn't mean you can stir up mischief as you please. I know that. I'm older than you, Riv. You can't scold me like a kid. Oh, how wrong you are. The bright morning turns into a warm afternoon as we explore the market purchasing no small amount of foods and curious trinkets. Before I knew it, I carrying around a bag made from exotic leather with an assortment of colognes, books, and fine souvenirs tucked inside. Of course, I wind, I wind up convincing Arden to carry the bag. <laughs> I guess he's our man, he has to carry our shit. He needs to put the muscle, put the muscles he's built from all that training to good use after all. He seems exhilarated that we're spending time together like we used to, but the only reason I'm enduring his company is so I don't have to make myself an easier target. I will admit, it does bring back memories of happier times, but those times are long gone, and now I think I'm caught up in some political game that's far more important than drowning myself in nostalgia. Look, Riv! Snake Charmer! Damn! Wish I had that kind of skill. Arden's excited voice beside me directs my attention to a man seated on a carpet nearby, surrounded by a thick circle of murmuring admirers. Let's go watch him. I bet your legs are getting sore from all this walking anyway. Excuse me. Just because I'm not a royal guardsman doesn't mean I'm out of shape. Despite my protests, I let Arden tug me over to the snake charmers and we push our way into the audience to get a better view. The sound of the strange flute-like instrument he's playing seems to make the serpent before him sway and shift, its leathery body rising to a somewhat disconcerting height. I watch for a little while, but boredom soon overcomes me, and I turn to search for Arden and drag him off. Arden? It seems you're still a little careless about leaving your back exposed. Someone suddenly presses against me from behind, and a low chuckle echoes in my, hear in my ear, and I can feel something hard down below in his pants at my ass. What could it be? A familiar sensual voice. The rough grasp of large hands on my shoulders. This is... What the hell are you doing here? Stalking more victims? Oh, that's rather cold, isn't it? I've been keeping an eye on you. Let's just say that much. Those words alone are a little more than unnerving. Who is this man? 
If you want a few more details, you'll have to leave your friend behind for a few moments. But the choice is yours, little kitten. After whispering those warm words against my ear, he sets back, and I quickly turn to see him beckoning me with a curled finger. Um, fuck you, dude. We're going for Arden first. You know that. Tch. I have no reason to trot along after him just to listen to more cryptic nonsense, and I don't make a habit of following people who sexually assault me in public. Besides, if I abandon Arden again, he's probably going to make me feel guilty the next time we run into each other. I deliberately turn my back on Franz and ignore him, focusing instead on trying to find wherever Arden slipped off to. Through the throng of enchanted viewers, I spot him closer to the inner part of the circle and start to weave my way closer. As I get near to him, though I notice a familiar little girl close to his side, one who looks about as fascinated as he is by the snake charmer. Hazel? What are you doing here? Oh, you're the nice gentleman from yesterday. I was told I could go out and see some of the festival. It's so amazing, isn't it? All the sights and sounds and smells. <laughs> I hate to be a Scrooge, but it's a little unusual for a servant's child to be given such free reign. She is pretty cute, though. I'd be willing to bet she has Silas trained with those puppy dog eyes, and he lets her do whatever she wants. Probably covers for her if she gets into trouble, too. Well, make sure you don't eat too much candy, or you'll get a stomachache. I should know that happened to me all the time when I was your age. Arden turns around when he hears us talking. His surprised gaze flickers from me to Hazel. Oh, hello there, little miss. I've seen you around before, haven't I? Back in the capital's castle, I run around the main halls all the time. <laughs> and get into lots of mischief, hmm? Look, you already found something in common. I can tell you'll be great friends. He's a lass beaming brightly up at me. That reminds me, where did you sneak off to yesterday? You shouldn't do things like that, you know. Her expression falls slightly in my words, eyes flickering down to the ground a little guilty. A moment later, though, she quickly brightens up again, giving me a mischievous grin. It's a secret! I'm really sorry, though. I got too excited. You forgive me, right? I can't help but raise an eyebrow dubiously at her reply, but it doesn't seem like anything worth being bothered by. Besides, if anyone's to blame, it's Silas for pawning her off on me in the first place. Oh, this is the little girl you were looking for last night? Well, you can't be too mad at her, Rivian. I know firsthand how boring it can be standing around in castles all day. No one asked for your opinion, Arden. However, all is forgiven. Just make sure you're careful if you run off again, since there are some unsavory types attending these festivities. Bronze's face comes to my mind, and I inadvertently shiver. Yes, Mr. Rivian! Thank you! She giggles happily and runs forward to give my waist a little hug, then slips past me. I turn slightly to catch a glimpse of her skipping onto the street, looking about as carefree as any child can be. You've already met a lot of people, haven't you, Riv? You used to hate socializing when we were little. Make no mistake, I still hate it. Unfortunately, socializing is rather hard to avoid when you're at a socializing event. Baffling, isn't it? Arden pulls a face, but still laughs a little bit, nudging my shoulder with his hand. You know, you remind me a lot more of your father now. I remember seeing him always making fun of people. He made fun of me too, whenever I came over to play. Trust me, I was the brunt of his scathing humor for many years. Maybe constantly being around the king and having to hold back his sarcasm made all those caustic remarks get bottled up inside him. Enough about that old man, though. Let's head back towards the castle. I want to take a short nap before the dinner and the inevitable dance. You're tired? I thought you were in great shape. I give Arden a rough kick to his shin to remind him that only one of us is allowed to make fun of people. After he yelps and hops a bit, we start strolling through the stalls in the opposite direction, returning in the direction of the castle. 
We buy a few more small things on the way, and I manage to get my hands on a rather nice emerald studded brooch for my mother. By the time we arrive back at the castle entrance, it's already turning to late afternoon, the sun's golden shape gradually descending in the west. I part ways with Arden, denying his request for me to show him my room, and hurry back up to the second floor. Dumping my bag of miscellaneous purchases on top of my clothes trunk, I pull my boots off and throw myself onto the luxurious bread with a soft groan. Despite how tired I am from all that walking around, a strange tension won't leave my body. I won't go so far as to say it's a feeling of foreboding, but it's as if some sixth sense I have is tingling, rather ominously. It's all that bastard Franz's fault, making me all paranoid. Wallowing languidly in my self-pity, I sprawl out over the covers, nestling against my pillow and letting out a deep sigh. I'm sure it doesn't matter if I fall asleep, since Silas will probably come wake me up again. It's pretty impressive that he managed to remember a single guest among the hundreds who must be here. The skill of a royal butler, I suppose. I close my eyes and try to catch a little rest. However, I can't ma manage to slip into a more than a light doze, teasing and turning from side to side. Either from lingering excitement or apprehension, I'm too restless to fall into a deep sleep. There's been too much stimulation today for an introvert like me. Damn it, I probably haven't talked to so many people, so many different people in years. <sighs> it's no use. Opening my eyes, I grudgingly pull myself into a sitting position, staring through the balcony doors into the evening sky. A part of me wants to go out and lean on the balustrade, but I'd rather avoid a repeat of last night. <gasps> As I sit on my bed contemplating what to do, a knock suddenly comes at my door. I slide off the floor and stride over to open it, but hesitate. It's probably just Silas, but what if it's someone who... Have some balls, man. God's sake. <laughs> Scolding myself quietly, I pull the door open, although I take a little step back just to be safe. Who the hell is this? <sighs> Before me stands a young man, probably a couple years my junior. I definitely don't recognize him. Why is he staring at me like I just morphed into a monster? S sorry sir. I g g got the wrong room. Oh, well, don't worry about it. Looking for someone in particular? J just Miss Celeste? His stuttering, while perhaps cute at first, is quickly getting on my nerves. Celeste, you say? I think I may have met her earlier. I didn't know she was in the same hall as me. I, I thought she was. But maybe not. I'll go find her. S sorry again. Right. I watch as he scampers off down the corridor, hastily examining all the room's numbers. What an odd boy. He's either very shy or completely out of sorts for some reason. I wonder how we know Celeste. I'll have to ask her next time I run into her. Well, seeing as there's not much else for me to do, I might as well take a little stroll around the castle before I head downstairs. I stuff my hands in my pockets and mosey around the hall quay corner, making sure there's not an Arden lurking in wait. It seems to be clear, so I wander down the next hall with a relieved exhale. I make my way towards the general direction of the main hall, but with the occasional detour to admire tapestries and small alcoves decorated with paintings and plush chairs. There are probably a lot of interesting nooks and crannies in this place. After all, the king is known for his love of collecting things, including apparently collecting a bunch of foreigners who hate the Varison bloodline. Mm -hmm. Is that a person over there? Or a statue? Either way, they look very intent on whatever they're reading. Oh, no, no, no. As quietly as possible, I start to back away, praying not to be noticed. Shit! Damn these squeaky floorboards! I freeze in place as the tall figure turns towards me, glasses flashing in the light. Oh, Linnaeus! Is that the little lint picker looking to creep up on me again? 
talk about holding a grudge, I was actually trying to creep away from you. Deciding it's probably best to be polite rather than doing too much to get on his bad side, I clear my throat. Ahem, <clears throat> Inquisitor. I was just heading down to the main hall. Linnaeus's eyes glint behind his glasses as he closes the book in his hand and saunters towards me. Hmm. I could have sworn there's a much simpler way to get to the main hall than through this back passage. Well, I was exploring a little, you know. It's a shame to have all this fine art and no one to view it. Huh. After a scornful laugh, he taps a finger on the unmarked cover of his book, watching me sus suspiciously. I brace myself for what's undoubtedly an accusation, tensing slightly. <sighs> I suppose I owe you an apology. What? I tap the side of my head, wondering if my hearing's gone bad. Linnaeus lets out a hmph in response, his eyes narrowing. I was, perhaps, excessively rude earlier. There was an unexpected occurrence this morning that had put me in something of a foul mood. It seems bizarre for him to actually be remorseful. Is he trying to make fun of me? I narrow my eyes at him slightly, trying to judge his intentions. Um... What's done is done. I think that's the less... Um... The less good answer for romancing him, since... We gotta stay on this Arden train, guys. There'll be time for Linnaeus soon. I don't believe he's actually sorry at all. More than likely, he's just trying to set me up for another insult. Well, I'm not falling for it. Yeah, he seemed pretty sorry, but okay. I see. Well, what's done is done. We all have our sour moods every now and then. Some more than others. Offering a concise reply, I briskly changed the subject, not giving him time to come up with any more, any further sour remarks. Are you heading down as well? Are Grand Inquisitors free to mingle and dance with us common folk? While my presence here is as a guest of his majesty, I do not consider myself to ever be off duty. After all, it is not as if treasonous men stop being treasonous during pleasant gatherings. If anything, the risk is higher. Despite his haughty tone, it's hard to deny that he really does take his job seriously. I suppose it's one of those positions that doesn't allow much time for rest. Linnaeus turns and motions for me to follow him down the corridor, setting off in a brisk pace in the direction of the main hall. I catch up to his side and glance at his severe-looking profile, his eyes constantly scrutinizing the world around him from behind those glasses. If you follow in your father's footsteps and wind up in his highness's ring of advisors, it is best we learn to tolerate each other. He pauses for a moment, then his voice suddenly growing a little more hesitant. There are many in his circle who I find to be of questionable nature. But nonetheless, it is not my duty to speak against his decisions. I hope you didn't consider Father to be of questionable nature. His eyes flick down to me sharply. I meet his gaze as best I can, even though that hawkish stare is quite difficult to be the subject of. He is a man possessed of exceptional perceptiveness. Enough so to rival my own. That is all I shall say. I'll make sure to tell him. I'm sure he'd appreciate a compliment from a man like you. Do I sense sarcasm in your voice? Need I remind you of our truce? I purse my lips doubtfully. Truce or not, I'll doubt he'll be inclined to hold back from insulting me if I slip up somewhere. This man is vicious. We emerge at the balcony of the main hall, where it seems guests are starting to gather in their formal attire. I noticed a girl from earlier, Celeste was it, standing next to an older, slightly rotund man, chatting, chatting happily. That must be her daddy that I was referring to earlier. <laughs> I knew she had a daddy. Her father, I wonder? The doors to the dining hall are soon opened up by well-dressed attendants, and I walk in with Linnaeus into the rather magnificent room. Oh, is that the Grand Inquisitor? Who's that he's with? Are they brothers? Why would you just randomly assume that? Mm, I want to marry a man like that, Regal. Sounds like the Inquisitor is rather popular. 
I guess it makes sense. He's quite young, but he already holds one of the most important positions in the court. After destroying potential rivals, will to live and crushing the opposition, no doubt. The superficiality of court never fails to disgust me. I long for the day when a man is judged by his actions rather than his outward appearance. I hate to tell you this, but you'll be longing for that day until you die. If appearances didn't matter here, we'd all be wearing burlap bags. Perhaps you should be the trendsetter, hmm? A burlap bag on your head would undoubtedly be an improvement. What a fucking truce, guys. Well, I set myself up for that one. We get closer to the massive table, and it seems like there's no predestined seating. Predetermined seating? Why did I say predestined? That makes it sound a lot more... <laughs> a lot more weird. <laughs> Something unusual for an event of this caliber, but maybe the king wants, wants a more relaxed atmosphere. Guests seem to be sitting down with their friends and relatives, and there seem to be a few blushing courtships in the progress before even the soup is served. <sighs> I spot Arden already seated, looking rather uncomfortable and surrounded by what looks like a bunch of old ladies. Aunts, maybe? His grandmother definitely did pop out of quite a few daughters, if I remember correctly. There's no free seating around him, although it's not like I need another dose of Arden again so soon anyway. Well, I assume there are individuals who would appreciate your company more than myself. So, this is presumably where we part ways. I turn to see Linnaeus, staring past me idly, his eyes following the servants skittering about with their preparations. You've already got a seat in mind? Not particularly. If I find one with a view of the dining room I like, I shall politely request its occupant to vacate. He smirks somewhat evilly, a rather sadistic glint shining through the lens of his glasses. Talk about abuse of power. Well, you're far from my ideal dinner partner. But I don't see anyone else I know around, and I'd rather not be sought out by a certain lady from last night. I grimace that saccharine cooing replaying itself all too vividly in my ears. Flattering. Have you already been caught up in my suave charm like those admirers from earlier? You have about as much charm as a pile of bricks, I remark silently to myself, following Linnaeus over to a vacant seat of set of seats. We settle down in our surprisingly comfortable chairs, neither of us are inclined to share many more words as we wait for the meal to begin. Just as I begin reciting poetry in my head out of sheer boredom, the empty chair by my side opposite Linnaeus is suddenly pulled out. Thrilled at the idea of potentially meeting more exciting conversations partners, I quickly cast a welcoming smile upwards. Ah, greetings. My name is... Don't you think I know your name by now, little kitten? A tall, tanned man lowers himself to the seat beside me, pulling himself up close, a wide and wolfish grin on his lips. Oh, Fortuna, why must you torture me so? <laughs> As Franz chuckles contently and leers at me, Linnaeus, who is watching something in the distance, suddenly turns his attention towards us. Oh? I was under the impression you had no friends, Verison, other than your father and that oaf of a god. He is the farthest thing from a friend, let me tell you. A scrutinizing, gleeful glimmer fills Linnaeus' glasses visibly. I see, I see. Well, we do live in a progressive time. There's nothing wrong with two men deeply in love. <laughs> I audibly grind my teeth together while Franz lets out a delighted laugh, taking those words as his cue to curl his arm around about my shoulders. Maybe I'll get lucky and someone will put ways in my wine while I'm not looking. I'm over here, assassins, you who? You hear that? Nothing wrong with giving in to your desires. However, it is entirely inappropriate for Varys and son to frolic with an obvious foreigner. You should cease such disgusting actions immediately. <laughs> Look at us just in the middle. 
Linnaeus' voice suddenly grows much frostier, a clear look of mistrust on his sharp features as he watches Fran's lip curled in the distance. Curled in, dis in distaste. To my surprise, the broad smirk on Franz's face suddenly flickers a little, his own expression darkening somewhat. He glances over Linnaeus for a moment, in what probably... in the probably the first time I've seen him look annoyed. Grand Inquisitor. Right. I see the king has played one of his trump cards a little early. Trump card? Why in heaven's name would he need to do that? I think you know as well as I do, Inquisitor. But I'm sure you've got everything under control. <sighs> I swear I feel like I'm sitting between two cannons pointed at each other. The sudden animosity in the air is thicker than a bowl of uncooked porridge. I should do something before it explodes. Uh, ah, look, they're bringing the food out, finally. I'm completely famished, aren't you two? <laughs> mm. <laughs> they are not amused. They continue to glower at each other, even as the servants place an array of tantalizing platters in front of us, filled with dishes of both vegetables and meats. Wow, they brought desserts too! My goodness, look at all that cake! I'm almost tempted to skip the main courses! To my immense relief, Franz pulls away from the staring contest first, his gaze shifting from Linnaeus to me. Lingering antagonism in his stare makes me cringe a little, considering I'm accustomed to his usual bedroom eyes. That ickiness quickly melts away, however, and he reaches out to squeeze my shoulders with unnerving intimacy. Sweets for the sweet, they say. You should eat all the cake you like, kitten. It'll make your lips taste sublime, I'm sure. He starts to pick from a few dishes to fill his plate, humming to himself in a show of nonchalance. What irresponsible advice. Replenish your energy properly with a balanced meal, Varison. Chiding me with a click of his tongue, Linnaeus also reaches forward to elegantly serve himself some of the spread before us, casting a quick glance in my direction. The tension clearly remains hanging between them, but just because they're acting all haughty doesn't mean I should starve myself. I eye the dishes, contemplating whether to splurge or not. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see. I think um I don't know. Why am I why am I even fighting? Why are these two men even fighting over me? I I want to be with Arden. <laughs> why are they here right now? I this isn't right. Oops. I didn't even mean to choose that. <laughs> I think I chose the cake one. <laughs> But um, either way, I think I'll end this episode here, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hi, guys. I just wanted to let you guys know about my Discord I have. Um, I'm chatting in there. A lot of other subscribers are chatting in there, and it's a lot of fun. And I really recommend um, pasting the Discord link in here instead of just clicking on it in my YouTube comments. Sometimes... Discord can be a little bit weird when you click on the link, so I recommend just copy and pasting it in here. And you have to be over 18 to be in this Discord though, guys, so please do be aware of that. If I find out you're under 18, I will ban you, I will kick you. And all you have to do when you get to this page is type dash agree after you read the rules and agree to the rules, just type a dash agree. That's really important. It's a dash and then an agree. No spaces. If you just type that, you'll get full access to the Discord. And there are 58 people who can't, um, who can't um, figure out how to type dash agree. <laughs> so don't be like them. All right, guys, I hope to see you in the Discord. Bye.